How do hackers hack security cameras and gain access to them? I'm Jody and I'm going to answer this for you. Why? Ah, for reasons. It is always in the news and people are highly curious or worried about this. Recently, there was a news piece in which uh, Vietnamese hackers, I think, gained access to several security cameras inside people's bedrooms and were selling access to them. The highest level for VIP was access to live cameras inside people's bedrooms. The first question is why you should have a camera in your bedroom connected to the internet. Second question is how? I'm going to answer this for you. Uh, let me show you here first. There are two different categories are of cameras. Some are not online, only connected to your laptop, hardware, uh, your desktop computer, and these kind of stuff. And the second category are the ones which are purposely connected to the internet all the time. These are two different categories. In the first one, you have a, for example, webcam here, or on your laptop, Ah, like this. This is your laptop and it has a camera here. This camera is connected to your operating system and different softwares are using this to work. Some people gain access to this camera, turn it on and start watching you by hacking your computer. In the hacker circuit, this is called Camfection, infecting your camera. And there were huge uh, courts about this. There was one guy, I think, he was purposely attacking specific women on the internet. So, you know the purpose. And hacking their cameras. How? By infecting their computers. It's enough to send them a file which looks like a PDF but runs a software. Or even you can run, ask them, please run this software on your computer. They may ask why. You can say, ah, this is a very secret software I created. When you run it, you can hack other people's cameras. Some people will download and run it instantly. And you are hacking their camera. What this method does, uh, this confection, technically, they are installing a software with the access to this camera, and turn it on whenever they want and watch. But here you have to target, you have to spear phishing. You have to target your sp specific people you want to see. Sometimes women, this guy I think infected more than 100 women's cameras. Or there were campaigns on the FBI. And some uh, news pieces were telling that, okay, FBI is able to hack specific people's cameras and turn, and turn them on by request. This is one kind of attack. Sometimes your camera do have a light here. Even sometimes you can change the firmware, update the firmware to prevent this light from turning on. This is one method of camera hacking. It's very, very easy. You can run a software on a computer which has access to the camera and send photos wherever you want. Even I think you can write this program in a weekend easily. Next step is pursuing people to install this on their own computers, which is a little bit strange. But if you know human nature, it's very easy. It's called social engineering. Send them a PDF, which links to somewhere. Send them a scandalous video. Send them some secret information or any other method you know. Or someone, some, uh, someday when you are at someone's house, you can just install the software on their computer. This is highly, highly illegal. Never do this. Learn these things to prevent this from happening. And also, I want to bust the myth around this idea of security camera hacking. This is whole story about camfection. But what is mostly happening nowadays is not this. Nowadays, we have more and more cameras in our houses. This is your house. This is the door. This is the entrance. And you have a camera here, like this, which looks at this entrance. This is the internet, and this camera is connected somewhere to the internet. From anywhere else, you can sit here on your laptop or mobile and 
connect to the same place on the internet, it can be an IP address, not 10, 10 101, 12, 11, 42, for example. You can connect to here and see what is going on here. This is an internet connected security camera, like a IP camera, IP cam. This is another attacks vector. What some people do is they start scanning the whole internet, all the IPs, one, 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 two, one, 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 blah, 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 and continue checking all the IPs they see and check if they can see a camera there, if there is a pattern which looks like a camera. This is called scanning the internet. This looks unlikely, but it's very, very, very easy and fast, easier than what you can imagine. Even there are sites like, for example, Shodan.io, which does the same things. It calls itself search engine for the internet of everything. You can go and browse for many, many different things. You can create search queries and say, I want whatever port 22, which is open inside this specific geographical location. Or you can say, I need the popular tags, the most popular tag is the webcam. So what Shodan does is all the time it is searching the internet and checking if, like, if, it, if it can see a database, camera, whatever. It's a very, very, very general tool for hackers. When you want to just do something out of boredom, we go here and search for a database which is open. For example, a Mongo database in this area and you just go and check the IP address. This is exploring tags of webcam. You can see that, for example, may gain IP cameras with username admin, password admin. I found 746 of these kind of cameras. On Shodan, some of these are honeypots, as you can see here. These honeypots mean that this is just for test. This looks like a server with lots of open ports which tries to trick people into going there so they can see that, okay, someone is trying to hackers but many of these are honeypots but you have to go and check for example it says on this specific address there is one which is working on this specific port and it looks like a camera so the second method was browsing all the internet for all the ips and reaching these scanning the internet this is another method which works something most people do again out of uh, no, not, of, not out of boredom. It's a very, very, very common hacker's practice. It's something which is called Google Dork. When you go to a website, there is something in the title which is shown on the browser's tab. For example, if you go to the Instagram, on the browser tab, it says Instagram. You can search in the Google and say in title, Instagram. You say, I want all the pages Google knows about, which has Instagram in their title. So you can check how a specific camera works and say, okay, for example, I know a camera which shows live view in its title and it's called Axis Camera. So it's enough to say, I want to search internet for pages which has live view in their title and has access in their title. Practically, this is by random. Google was just checking all the internet and found one camera here. And you can just search Google to show you those results. Strange, but very straightforward and very, very, very common. You can say like this, in title, live view, in title axis. These are called Google Dorking. So if you search for Google Dork, uh, sorry, Google Dork for camera, you can find lots of these kind of string to search for. Or Google Dork for databases, Google Dork for blah blah. Practically you are helping, you are asking for help from Google to show you vulnerable pages. For example, I search for this in title live view and in title axis and as you can see 
I found many, many, many cameras. You can go and check them one by one, see what they are showing. Some people and websites, which are even strange that they are legal, do the same thing because it has access and a live view in their title. So Google indexed this. I just found it on the Google. Very strange. Google dorking. Know about this. Many, many, many attacks start with Google dorking for different things, not only for camera. Even there are some sites which index all of these open cameras. Is this illegal? Technically, no, because this is a camera and it's on the web and you can go there and watch it. Sometimes this is called security by obscurity. You should not have security by obscurity. If someone installs a camera for you and says, oh, no, it's safe because you have to go to this address to watch it. And nobody knows about this address. Only you know it. This is security by obscurity and it's very bad. Because as we saw, many people may be able to find this. So technically, this is not illegal. This is a website on the internet and you go there and watch it. Nothing illegal in it. That's why people can create sites, sites like this. For example, uh, Insecam, Insecure Cam. It has different cameras from different places in the world, which you can browse when you are, for example, this is a, in the Russian Federation, this is a car repair center or something. You can browse by country. For example, you can go to the, all the cameras in Poland. It's full of ads because this is how they're earning money. It says, okay, and for example, where were we? Poland, we have this. Or you can go based on the, Places you can say I want everything which is a house. This is not inside the house. Inside the house logically is illegal. I'm not a law advisor, but these are the houses. So people are looking their houses, not inside their houses. Or you can go based on country, time zones, and different kind of things. You can even find fun things. For example, I remember seeing, for example, on the places. Birds, it's very common people to live stream their bird nest. So you can check what is going on with this specific bird, which is fun. So what we had was, first we had this cam fiction. Someone installs the software on your computer and checks your specific cam. It's targeted. The other part is scanning the whole internet and find whatever we can. It's not targeted, but okay. Not that different than having this camera or that camera. I'm just searching for a camera. This is how many hackers work. They scan the internet with softwares like, for example, Nmap for known vulnerabilities on specific IPs. So they're scanning a range of IP to see where they can hack. Same thing happens with Google Dork. You know one specific hack, you search for that specific URL and try to... Uh, use that your specific attack on that specific site, but you are not targeting one specific place. These are different. On camera hacking, both can happen. Sometimes people target one specific target, and sometimes you're just scanning to find fun things. And both is not good if you're trying to make harm. So what we saw was mainly in both cases, here the problem is social engineering, Someone is convincing you to install something on your computer or they infect your computer without your knowledge. Here, it's about bad configuration. You have a webcam for your house, but it's broadcasted on the internet with no username password or with default username password. As you saw in Shodan, uh, here, there were searches for all the known ones. For example, it says, may gain IP cameras with the username and password of admin, admin. This is not good. If you want to prevent this from happening, update your firmwares all the time because someone may find a security hole in one specific older version of a camera. Then the company will update the firmware, it will be fixed, but most of us do not update our devices, especially our cameras in our factory, for example. So what happens is you have to update your firmwares, update your softwares, 
to close the known security holes. Then change the default username and password. Never rely on username and password, which are default. And last, make sure that you are not secure because you are obscure. It's not about, nobody knows about this IP address. Nobody knows that I have a camera. People know, people test, people find out. So this was what I wanted to show you. And there is no strange thing behind this hacking of cameras. There are millions of cameras in the world. So if you search, you can find thousands of ones which you can watch online on the internet. If you have one, make sure that it's updated. The default password is changed. There are different security levels. Even if it's an important place, they may be able to configure it in a way that it answers only from connections from your home, for example, from your own IP address and these kind of stuff. Have fun. And if any questions, I will be happy to answer. And if you have any other question, I will be happy to create another video about it. I was Jody, and this was Geeking Widget.